I went on this date with this girl. She said, okay, so when are you going to start paying my bills? Um, never. <laughs> Your number's not safe. Uh, let's be realistic, okay? You're broke and you need help. <laughs> If you can buy 30k for a car, you can pay 30k for me. I bet you're fine this part. You said that I should pay 30k for you when the only place you're gonna drive me is crazy. Absolutely not. This is not even delusional. That's dementia because you done lost your damn mind. Buy a dog and die alone. <laughs> <sighs> What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy Rome back with another video. If you're new to the platform, welcome to the tribe. By the end of this video, I hope you subscribe. Let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and jump into the next video. I'm a little nervous to say this. This might not go over that well on a public platform. But as a woman, when you start making great income, you just see the dating scene completely differently. What men are able to bring to your proverbial table, if not money, just starts to look very different. You start to realize that the emotional connection is not necessarily there. You start to notice that, hey, this is not somebody who could really keep up with me or understand me intellectually. This is not somebody who necessarily has the emotional intelligence to be a great partner in my lifetime. And in my work, I've also seen this as being something that holds women back subconsciously actually from making money because deep down they know and understand that it really limits their options for partners. I feel like so many people were purposely being obtuse um, and understanding what I was talking about in my latest video, but this is exactly what I was talking about. I said that as women come into their own financially and become more confident with their money, the way that they date just completely changes the, what they're looking for, what they're willing to accept, and they're really able to bring, honestly, a more whole, neat, and morally righteous person to the dating pool. So go check out how everyone misunderstood what I was saying, though, in my last video. No, I'm pretty sure everybody understood exactly what you meant. This is one of the problems of successful women when it comes to the dating market. Their, sh their dating pool shrinks. That's what she's saying, but she's trying to word it differently to try to coddle her feelings because she's probably having a hard time finding what she's looking for because the men that make what she makes, they don't care about her money. They don't care how much she makes. They don't care how she makes it or what she does. They care about more, like she said, the emotion. So I would imagine you're probably struggling with that part yourself, ma'am. So let's keep it moving. Your ideal partner is ready now, not later. Don't build with a man. You don't have to build with a man. But let me tell you something. If you get with a man at the finish line, uh, first off, he's going to have some boundaries and he ain't going to put up with no shit. That's probably number one. So if you're ready to say, okay, yes, daddy. Yes, daddy. I got you. I understand, daddy. Yep. See, you guys want one without the, you guys want one without the other. You want all the benefits of getting the guy at the finish line, but you but you want to be equal with him. How does that work? How does that work out? And it don't work out because here's the thing. I'm not suggesting for any individual you go ahead and build with a man, but I will tell you one thing. You want to establish trust from him. You want to establish that you were there for him. You want to establish him doing whatever is needed to be and protect you and put you in place when he does get there. Okay, you can see that. But don't be complaining when you get with the guy at the finish line. He's like, all right, uh, she has somebody, I'm going to go get her now because you acting up. No warning. <laughs> no warning, girl. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm going to have three of y'all because I can't stand you for too much, too long because I'm at the finish line anyway. That's how, they're, that's how they, they can be, y'all. You know, different type of levels come with different type of problems. So you go ahead, girl. You go get what you need. And... And when y'all over here seeing men like him or like myself trying to explain this to women, the first thing that'll come out of one, out of a woman's mouth is that broke man energy and only oh, broke man say this and things of that nature. Like, no, it really is like this. We're really trying to let y'all understand how men think, especially when it comes to terms of men with means. 
you're you're giving away your leverage when y'all do that this is what we're trying to get y'all to understand but the word submission alone bothers y'all a much so much so just imagine what it's going to be like when you actually dealing with a man face to face in real life that expects this from you simply because he can afford to um, pay for everything and give you somewhat of a luxury lifestyle if that what do y'all expect it's like I remember covering a video a while back a woman said I think her name is Yaya on TikTok she said you gotta understand if that if that's what y'all want from me and then it's gonna come with a little bit of massage it's gonna come a little bit with a um yeah sit down and shut the hell up it's gonna come with a certain level of authority that most of y'all don't want to deal with this is why a lot of y'all are gonna end up marking y'all selves out of the dating y'all gonna price y'all selves out of the dating market so to speak and end up staying perpetually single let's keep it moving and I thought I was the only one noticing. The heart of the issue. There is a glaring, almost laughable contradiction going on today. Many women, not all, but many, feel they deserve a man who's all in financially, providing 100% while they on their end contribute, what, a mere 5%, 10% at best? This is the paradox I'm dissecting today. You don't have to be a mathematician to realize that something doesn't add up here. We've got women out here waving the flag of independence, claiming they don't need a man, claiming they can do it all themselves until two things happen. They get older and the stress of work and bills start setting in. Then suddenly it's all about finding a man who's ready to provide 100%. But there's a catch not many women are ready for. You see, compatibility with a man who's a 100% provider isn't a free ride. It comes with its own price, and that price is submission. You cannot expect a man to give his all financially and accept nothing but attitude in return. A relationship is a two-way street. So if you're asking for a traditional, you have got to give traditional. That means if you want a man to step up, you have to be willing to play your part too. It's not about being regressive. It's about understanding the balance. In psychology, there's something called the equity theory. It tells us that for a relationship to feel satisfying to both parties, there has to be a fair exchange of contributions and rewards. People have to feel like they're getting a fair deal. This doesn't necessarily mean an even 50-50 split in all things, but rather that each partner feels they're getting as much out of the relationship as they're putting in. If a man is expected to put all the bills and a woman contributes minimally, this imbalance will lead to resentment and there will be a disconnect. Back in the day, gender roles weren't even a topic of discussion. A man provided and a woman took care of the home and kids. It wasn't something that was even up for debate. And guess what? Women statistically reported being happy, but then the world shifted. Women fought tooth and nail for the right to work, to be independent, to stand on equal footing with men. You wanted modernization? You got it. You wanted equality? It's here. You wanted financial independence? You earned it. You demanded a seat at the table? Now your seat is right at the head. But all this fighting came with a trade-off that women were not prepared for. Now that you got all you fought for, you're looking over the fence wondering if the grass was greener. This is depicted perfectly in the study done in 2009 named The Paradox of the Declining Female Happiness. It reports a significant and steady decline in women's happiness since the 1970s, despite increased opportunities and rights. The current state of society makes it a high-stakes gamble for a man to be a 100% provider. The game has changed, and the rules are not what they used to be. Back in the day, a man knew what he was signing up for. Women had clear roles, and the expectations were set in stone. But nowadays, it's like navigating a minefield blindfold. Today, you've got women actually branding themselves as bad bitches and thriving on male attention. It's a whole new world. Everyone's chasing likes, followers, and validation from strangers on the internet. So when a man thinks about being the sole provider, he's not just investing financially. He's taking a very real leap of faith in the unpredictable dating market. Investing 100% in a woman today is like playing the stock market. Sure, it can definitely be rewarding, but the risks are sky high. You don't know if your investment is going to bring returns or if it'll plummet the moment the opportunity comes along. It's not just about money. It's about where her attention and loyalty lie. Look, I want to be clear here. I'm not throwing shade at working women. If you want to work, excel, and climb that corporate ladder, that's awesome. Do you? But know this. This is a situation where you cannot have your cake and eat it too. You can't demand a man to cover 100% while contributing almost nothing. 
that's not a partnership, that's cherry. And it's not just unfair, it's unsustainable. So what's the takeaway here? Be real with yourself. What do you truly want and what are you willing to give? Equality is not just about taking. It's about giving, sharing, and supporting each other. It's not like it's 100% from one side and 5% from the other. It's about both parties bringing their all to the table and creating a life that's 100% together. So with that being said, until the next video, I you want to have to pay for everything. So when we go on dates, I'm expecting you to pay. And if you ask me to go 50-50, absolutely not, because your money is my money and my money is also my money. I definitely believe in family values, but I don't want to be a stay-at-home mom, so that means my partner has to be willing to be a stay-at-home dad, but he's never going to be able to take care of the kids like I can, so I guess I'll just have to work remote. What do I do for work? Of course I'm on social media talking shit about my three baby daddies as a full-time career. And yes, I still want kids, but I'm expecting you to step up and be a stepdad, but not too much of a stepdad that like they forget who their dad is, even though the dads I've chosen for them are deadbeats. Yeah, I definitely have traditional values, but I just don't want to have to cook and clean or take care of my family because he's a whole ass man and he can do it by himself. I need a man who understands emotions, but not too much, because if he's too feminine, that's a no for me, and it'll give me the it. Honestly, I don't really care how my household is run. I don't really care what you help with. I don't really need to talk about how our household might be run, or politics, or religion, or family values, or what I believe in, and if we align, because all that's important to me is if you make six figures, and you're six feet tall, and you know how to communicate, but like, you know how to communicate when it caters to my needs only. You know what I mean? God, I'm exhausted just making this video. Okay, bye. Yeah, exhausted, but I mean, damn, where does she miss? Where does she really miss? Oh, uh, man, let me know what y'all thought about this. If you're new to the platform, please subscribe. OGs, oh, I appreciate the love and support. Make sure y'all hit that bell notification. That way y'all know what I'm uploading. Hit the like button because it helps with the algorithm and helps me reach a broader audience. Also, look out for the Travel Vlog channel, Unplugged Traveler. Link is in the description, as well as my latest mixtape, Neo Trap Volume 2. And if you want to purchase any other merch, Spreadshot.com link is in the description. Until the next video, y'all, deuces.